Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another Boolean tutorial. But this time, instead of just working on the Boolean aspect of it, we're going to actually clean up the mesh. If you are new to this channel, I post tutorials on a weekly basis. Software includes Maya, ZBrush, and Substance Painter. So if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started in retopologizing our end gone piece of cheese here. So in the last video tutorial, I posted about Booleans and how to quickly create this piece of cheese. But one of the major issues with Booleans is that it creates a lot of end gons. And these end gons are not good. You do not want to have too many end gons because it can basically give you unpredictable results when it comes to rendering, when it comes to modeling. And if you were planning to animate this, it would also cause you problems. And also if you're trying to import it into other engines, such as Unreal or ZBrush or Substance Painter, this could also cause unpredictable results. So it's important to retopologize this. So this video tutorial is going to be a quick way of showing you guys how I would retopologize this piece of cheese. So let's go ahead and duplicate it. Control D, move this to the side. And the first thing I'm going to do is go to mesh and I am going to literally go to remesh. I'm going to go to my options and reset my settings just to make sure everything looks the same as yours and then click on remesh. And just like that, I now have a really, really messy um, and <laughs> full of triangles. Not sure if this is better, but at least now the edges, basically it's just a lot of triangles, but we can clean this up. Let's go ahead and I'm going to duplicate this just for fun. Control D again, just to just to demonstrate it. And this light is getting in the way. So let me go ahead and control H, hide it and select this one. All right. So this cheese, I am going to retopologize it and go to the options. Again, I'm going to reset my settings to make sure that they match yours. And you'll notice that what it's going to do is that it's going to target face count. So what that means, if you go to your display, heads up display and then select poly count, you're going to see that my overall scene has 121,000 tries or 117,000 plus faces. But if I select it, it'll show you that this one has 6,000 tries, 6,800. This one has 57,000. And of course, this one has 57. So we can actually tell it, hey, I don't want 57,000. Maybe can you drop it down to, I don't know, let's do 10,000. And then apply. So it's going to, you know, do its thing. It is retopologizing. It really is depending on how fast your computer is. So mine's an okay, you know, decent computer. So it might take a second to do 10,000, but basically it's calculating, there it goes. It's gonna try to aim for 10,000 uh, faces. So you can see up here that I have 9,600 faces and I have 19,000 tries. So let me delete the history and all that stuff first before I start messing around. And it turned green. So whenever you guys see fluorescent green, like this, it means that the shader broke. So uh, the shader is basic, it's not connected. So it's an easy fix. Let's right click, ex assign existing material Lambert one. And there we go. Now this is still pretty high. So I could either try retopologizing again, or let me just go ahead and duplicate this, move this aside. And this one, I'm gonna change it to 5,000. Let's hit apply. So now it's gonna calculate it again to see if it's possible to reduce this to 5,000. And there you go. So again, I'm gonna delete the history and all that jazz just because I really wanna make sure that it doesn't try retopologizing over and over. And you can see that it hit 4,800 faces, which is awesome, all right? And we really can't see too much of a difference. Now, there is a difference between the edges. So I actually like what it did, which is bevel the edges for me. These guys, the, the original pieces of cheese didn't have any bevels. It's literally a flat plane and then whoop down to this crevice. But that's not really natural. You want the beveled edges. But to do beveled edges, it would be pretty challenging because these have a ton of n-gons. So when it converted into this, it kept that geometry, but once we were topologize it, it actually converted it into beveled edges, which means that it's much more natural and uh, smooth around the edges. So that's nice. And of course, can we really tell the difference between 10,000 and 5,000? Mm, a little bit, but in general, it all really depends what you're gonna do with this piece of cheese. All right, we can even go even further just to kind of demonstrate again. So duplicate, move aside, and this time I'm just gonna do a thousand and see what happens. Apply. 
All right, there it is. Do, do, do. Again, deleting the history, all that jazz, signed the Lambert, and you can see that it did its best to keep the geometry, but in general, it started to lose all those uh, defined details. Now, if, we, if this was something that was really far away and you didn't need to see it, then I would say this actually would, this piece of cheese would actually work. And actually, you could probably go even lower. But if you want, if you wanted to do a nice render, I'd probably recommend to do this one. Now you're not limited here. If you wanted to clean it up more, you can. You can, you know, just select a bunch of edges. For example, maybe this one, and uh, you can do a Control Delete, which gets rid of edges, and you can actually clean up your own mesh, right? So Control D, Control, sorry, Control Delete. That's what I meant. Um, that gets rid of edges and vertices. So if that's something of interest, you can actually go through and start cleaning up the mesh even more, um, depending on what you need this for. All right, so now I've already dropped it to 3,600. So things that are automated are great to help us get there, but it's not always 100%. So if you need this to be lowered, then uh, of course, that's why we get paid the big bucks. We do it ourselves. So that's why we get paid. Otherwise a machine could do it and that's no, and we wouldn't have jobs. So I probably won't do that one because that actually gets rid of the, some edges. So I'm just, I'm just kind of going through and uh, the topology is fun. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to find those perfect edges that I can remove. Um, so yep, that is how you can quickly retopologize your mesh. So using um, booleans and then using remesh and then finally retopologize. So hopefully you guys found this tutorial helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. In the next video tutorial, I want to go ahead and texture the piece of cheese procedurally so that we can get some really nice, cool results. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you learned something, please think please consider liking and of course subscribing. That is your message to me, letting me know that you like this content and that you want to see more. Please take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. There you can find free downloads such as 3D models, eBooks, and so much more. And also there are some e-courses. So if you would like to support me further, please consider purchasing an e-course. They are deep dives into Maya for modeling, UV mapping, texturing, and lighting. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep creating and I will see you in the next video tutorial.